Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Charlie Gregory. I'm a veterinarian specialized in aquatic animal health, specifically fish and corals. Uh, we're broadcasting live today from Boynton Beach, Florida, where we have a non-for-profit facility called Healthy Aquatics Marine Institute. Uh, during the week, we host school groups, and on weekends, we're open to the public for uh, aquacultured corals and quarantined fish. Um, thanks a lot for swinging by. Uh, we're gonna talk about some diseases today, and uh, hopefully you guys learn a lot and keep the fish alive and more than something. As a veterinarian giving advice, um, there's a, a disclaimer here. I can't be held responsible for any adverse effects that might happen to your fish as the result of these drugs or any of the advice I've been giving in this video. Uh, if I see you personally, we can create a relationship, parent, uh, patient, client, uh, veterinarian, but um, these are pieces of advice to be used um, as guidelines and as a first start. Uh, ideally, you have the help of a veterinarian or uh, a trained professional to diagnose these diseases, um, and then you use uh, prescribed medication as directed by either an over-the-counter source or a specific uh, aquarium professional. Kind of home base is 3,600 square feet, where we've got educational displays, including stingray, touch tank, uh, a couple sharks, some big friendly puffer fish, and then some serious mother colonies growing out for uh, coral display so that visitors can appreciate uh, the diversity and color. All right, so chloroquine phosphate is a great alternative to using copper to treat certain diseases. In general, there are certain fish that are extremely fragile and sensitive to copper, for example. Chloroquine's a good alternative, specifically for things like fairy wrasses, dog face puffers, anglerfish, mandarins, seahorses, stuff like that. Chloroquine's a quinine-based drug, so it's in the family with quinine, which uh, you can taste in, um, if you've ever had a gin and tonic. Tonic water was originally used to treat malaria in uh, the building of the Panama Canal. Quinine is almost the same thing as chloroquine. Uh, malaria being a protozoan, uh, it, it makes sense. Chloroquine treats protozoans in general, and it's uh, particularly effective against some of the common protozoan parasites we have to deal with in the aquarium trade. You know, keeping it above something like 10 or 12 part per million, that's 10 or 12 milligrams per liter, uh, you can usually deal with cryptocarrion. Um, what we use it for at the Healthy Aquatics Facility is if I see an outbreak of Brooklynella, uh, notorious in things like anthiases, anthiases will get a, a reddish patch behind their pectoral fin, it's pathognomonic for Brooklynella, so almost no other disease causes that in the anthiases. Um, I'll treat 15 part per million, that's 15 milligrams per liter uh, chloroquine phosphate and uh, usually clears that up pretty fast. Generally with any fish, I haven't seen any side effects. I've heard anecdotally that for some reason it doesn't work well while dosing praziquantel and so I don't remember where I saw that and uh, it's interestingly two things that you might want to run uh, prophylactically in quarantine. So what I recommend is you dose the chloroquine uh, separately from the praziquantel. Uh, you can run a skimmer in between them to pull most of them out and uh, you shouldn't have any interacting effects. Uh, I'm not sure, I suspect the metabolism of these might be in the liver and scientists that do human medicine have found that by running these two there might be um, uh, kind of a malfunctioning of the clearance rate which would cause an overdose if you run them concurrently. That's my speculation of where I, where I heard that they don't run well together. Mm -hmm. It's also traditionally used for oodinium, and uh, I've had mixed results doing that. Using it as a quarantine drug, uh, I suspect is much more effective for 
managing light infestations of Brooklynella and Oodinium, for example, because you only need to kill a few of them. You don't need to worry about the parasites in the process of overwhelming the fish and being embedded within the tissues where the chloroquine might not be as effective. The way that you dose this most efficiently, you can get these inexpensive milligram scales, even from Amazon, um, and realize that there's 3.8 liters in a gallon, and so you multiply the gallonage of your tank by 3.8 to get the number of liters, and then you multiply that by 15 as a good baseline for treatment. So you multiply that number of liters by 15 um, milligrams per liter, and you end up with how many milligrams of chloroquine you need to do a dose of. So from my experience, I haven't seen side effects when using chloroquine under 30 part per million. Uh, even at 30 part per million, that seems to be a pretty high concentration and it contends with most cases of Brooklynella or Oodinium. Um, I haven't seen side effects in fish. From what I understand, some people have, and so I've never tried to push that limit. Uh, might be interesting to do a little bit of research towards, but. Uh, what I generally do is 15 milligrams per liter, 15 part per million uh, every week if I have a fish system where I diagnose Brooklynella um, or I suspect Oodinium uh, with a fresh batch of fish. Uh, ideally, it sticks around in the water for a while. It's got a real long half-life. Um, every five to 10 days, depending on how your fish are looking, might be necessary, though, if you have a, a, a raging infestation of an unknown protozoan, and it seems like the chloroquine's working, but by day five, it looks like the fish are getting worse again, you can either up the concentration up to 30 milligrams per liter, or you can dose every other day and do a 50% water change um, if that's feasible for your tank. Usually much more feasible for bare-bottomed quarantine tanks uh, than full-blown display aquariums. Uh, you can procure chloroquine phosphate from a couple of places. Most people don't want to buy a kilogram of it online from the aquaculture pharmaceutical companies. Um, one great spot, these guys down in Homestead, uh, New Life Spectrum, will sell you uh, a small amount of chloroquine at a very reasonable price. There's enough in here to treat most tanks for 21 days, which is plenty for managing uh, the protozoan diseases we've been talking about already. You don't need the diagnostics of a microscope to run this prophylactically as a quarantine or as a treatment. Um, just appreciate that it's not an antibiotic, so if you have a fin rot, um, or it's not an anti-metazoan, so if you have uh, flatworms or something like that, uh, you're not going to get anywhere with the chloroquine treatment. If you're running chloroquine or uh, any number of drugs, it's good policy to turn off UV sterilizers, certainly, because the potential for denaturing those uh, chemicals and compounds is pretty high. Uh, chloroquine, when it becomes denatured, starts to turn the water brown. Um, I don't know about the toxicity of that, but the efficacy certainly will go down. Uh, things like nitrofurazone will become toxic if uh, too much UV light is uh, exposed to it, so UV sterilizer or powerful reef lights, certainly not a good option with that drug, and uh, kind of raise a caution with the use of chloroquine, for example, as uh, it might be toxic if it starts to get denatured. Our inability to measure chloroquine without a mass spectrophotometer um, is not really feasible, so the mass spec is something that if you're at the Georgia Aquarium, you can measure your chloroquine levels daily. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a veterinarian and I, I'm so adamant about trying to manage disease in whatever forms uh, they take. And in a reef tank, uh, you can often suffer some losses as a result of diseases that you would otherwise be able to manage in a fish-only tank using some of these more potent drugs like copper and chloroquine. Um, there's a lot of chemicals on the market that claim to be uh, reef-safe solutions to cryptocarrion. And then there's a lot of individuals who have some experience with uh, their personal aquariums where 
they have managed to mitigate the disease, cryptocarrion, marine nick, um, and other diseases effectively. Um, but I really want to caution everyone against false hope provided by some of these uh, techniques. Just because it worked in one person's tank once doesn't mean that it's going to work in your tank if you try to simulate their situation. Every tank is so different, the dynamics of the chemistry and all the different animals is almost impossible to replicate between tanks. So I don't want anyone going out of their way using a certain medicated food or a certain uh, technique of management and uh, thinking that that's going to be a solution to especially cryptocarrion. It breaks my heart that so many people are exposed to the disease um, from fish that they un unwillingly bring it in um, to their reef aquariums on and uh, at the end of the day, they get frustrated with the hobby and maybe even leave uh, the aquarium community as a result of this stupid parasite. Um, so the best policy is quarantine beforehand, work with stores that quarantine their fish specifically against cryptocarrion, uh, 12 days on copper, uh, hyposalinity, stuff like that um, can manage the disease from spreading. Um, and it can sneak in on the gills of fish uh, these other diseases, the other protozoans, Brooklynella, Oodinium, Uronema, they can all come in uh, unknowingly. So uh, a good quarantine protocol is really the best way to manage disease and, and, and basically avoid it from coming into your fish tank. Uh, there are certain ways that understanding the life cycle of the parasites, you might be able to uh, lessen the burden and build the, the amount of time that the fish have to grow resistance to it. But anybody telling you they've got a surefire uh, solution to specifically treating cryptocarrion in their reef tank uh, probably lacks the scientific evidence and wouldn't put uh, any assurance um, of their own uh, you know, on the line. Thanks again, everybody. This is Dr. Charlie Gregory from the Healthy Aquatics Marine Institute, uh, where our goal is to help everyone keep their fish healthy and uh, thriving. And uh, specifically, if I can be of help with understanding the disease issues in the aquarium hobby so that we can all uh, have a more successful community and a better experience, then um, I'm happy in doing my job. Take care.